Hi, I'm Teresa and welcome to my channel. Today I'm here for my seventh episode of Sapphic Reads. So if you don't already know, this is a series I have on my channel where I talk about and recommend to you five books that are sapphic that I have read and loved recently. And I've been reading a lot of sapphic books recently, which is a bit unsurprising for me. So I'm actually a couple episodes behind on this, so we're looking at some of the books I've read a couple months ago. And of course, if you want to catch up on all the other episodes, I'll have a playlist linked below that has all of them. And yes, let's just get started on the books. So first, I want to talk about the graphic novel Cheer Up, Love and Pom Poms by Crystal Fraser and Val Wise. I read an arc of this through NetGalley and it doesn't release until August, but it's very, very cute. I very much recommend you have it on your radar. So this graphic novel follows Annie, who's this like antisocial, kind of a mean lesbian overachiever who is forced to join the cheerleading team to kind of round out her college application and make some friends. And there she encountered her childhood best friend, Bibi, who is a trans girl. She's a people pleaser. She's one of the popular girls. And the two of them kind of rekindle this old friendship and maybe something more while also dealing with some just queer teen problems. And it's just a lot of fun. This is just sugary sweet. The best thing to just lose yourself in for a couple of hours. Such a fun, fast read. And I think that it did just the absolute perfect job of always remaining so light-hearted and sweet and everything while also really dealing with some more complex issues and some of the microaggressions that Bibi in particular faces and of course I also just love sports team dynamics in books. I detest sports in real life. I am absolutely useless at sports but uh, team sports is just so fun to read about. There's such a fun dynamic there on the team and this graphic novel very much captured that and I just adored reading those scenes as well. And another thing that I really appreciated and I've seen a lot of plus size people also appreciate is that we have a plus size main character and other plus size characters on the cheerleading team and they're never shown to like magically lose weight or anything as soon as they start exercising. You know, you're shown as being both fat and healthy and that's just such a good positive message to have as well. And this book is just full of positive messages and just the power of standing up for yourself and owning that and oh it's so good it packs a lot into a very very short story but it never feels rushed or anything it was just an absolute joy to read the perfect pick-me-up if you're ever looking for one next up was a bit of a change in pace and that was malice by heather walter so this is an adult fantasy and the first in a duology. This is a dark sapphic sleeping beauty retelling told from the perspective of the wicked sorceress but this is a kind of almost prequel to it so you get her kind of descent into villainy and how Aurora comes to be cursed and it's so 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 good if you like morally grey characters, villain origin stories and of course sapphic romance then you will really really love this. Um, we follow Alice who is the dark grace. In this world there are graces who have been given just a drop of power of the fae and this allows them to perform little magic tricks. But Alice is a dark race and the only one in existence because her power actually comes from this darker race of fae who are believed to be extinct. And so she's very much ostracised from society, outcast, she's bullied, she's just not in a great place because her power can only be used for evil and she's kind of dealing with this and reconciling this. But when one day she sneaks into a ball and she meets Aurora, the lovely princess and they begin a friendship which eventually develops into something more. We really begin to see her questioning what she's always been told about her powers and trying to use them for good to break the curse on Aurora. Because Aurora's family line has been cursed so that every female heir by the time she reaches 21 will die if she's not had true love's kiss and this curse was placed on her by one of these dark fae and so they think that because Alice has the same magic she may be able to break the curse. And we really just follow their relationship this trying to break the curse, Alice learning more about her magic and it's just so good, so 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 good, so fun and I really love this kind of setup to our traditional story and I think that the descent into villainy as well is just done so 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 well it's so believable you so completely understand everything that Alice is going through and why she makes the choices she does the ending just blew me away 
I I still think about it and it's been a couple months since I read it it's just left me completely reeling when I finished it I had to sit there and just like process it for half an hour or so and just think like what which was a bit of an issue because I had stayed up quite late to finish it because the last little chunk of this book was just a fair roller coaster. This is just, oh, it's so, so highly recommended. The romance as well is so well written and I'm like a little bit in love with Aurora as well. Like she's just this lovely idealistic princess. She loves her queendom. I believe that's a queendom rather than a kingdom. So, so, so much. And she has all these ideas of reform and ways to improve it and to make living conditions where the grace is better because they're very much I wouldn't quite say enslaved but not far from it and they really don't have any rights of their own and they're very fiercely controlled by the nobility by the royalty and she's just got all these lovely ideas and then they just bond so well and oh, love it <laughs> Alice also has a pet Kestrel called Callow who is just I love and they just go around together these both just kind of outcasts together and it's so cute but yes definitely if you like morally great characters and these examinations of villainy and monstrous and what it means to be a monster you will really really enjoy this one it is so good so next up i want to talk about these feathered flames by alexandra overy which is the first in a ya fantasy duology and retells the myth of the firebird and deals just with the russian folklore in general and it is again one that i absolutely adored if you like complicated sister relationships sapphic enemies to lovers again an examination of what it means to be a monster and really just intricate court politics you will love this one it is so 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 good and just by the way if you have read it and loved it you might want to keep an eye out on my instagram next month because i get to reveal the cover of the sequel and I'm very very excited it is so so unbelievably gorgeous <laughs> cannot wait to share it with you all so we can all just admire her <laughs> but yes these feathered flames follows the perspectives of two sisters twins Asya and Isaveta and these two were separated when they were children as one w goes on to become queen and stays in the palace and the other one is taken away to learn the ways of the firebird and so we meet them just as their mother comes to an untimely death which means that they will now ascend to their roles and they return to the palace so that Isabetta who was left there to train as princess to become queen is about to be coronated and Asya inherits the full power of the firebird and so the firebird is this power that she possesses and kind of takes over her in order to control how magic works in this world every time you cast any kind of spell there is a price and if you do not pay it you know it's usually like a bit of hair or if it's something more like blood or even limbs she will have to go and claim it if you do not pay it yourself as the firebird and as such the firebird is a very complicated political figure because it's such an important part of their history but magic's fading and they think it's the firebird's fault and when the firebird takes over it is very aggressive and brutal and all incredibly powerful and so yes uh, the two sisters reunite at the palace and they had grown up so 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 close but now it's such a complicated relationship as they've grown apart and grown into their own independent young women on their own Isaveta has been so consistently surrounded by intricate court politics and betrayal and scheming and she just doesn't trust anyone and she's in a very precarious position and really needs to maintain her power and build up her court and Asya is a complete outsider at court no idea what, what's really happening no idea how to deal with all of these scheming and betrayals that's happening and we just follow the two of them dealing with this as and also kind of like solving some kind of mysteries and just dealing with these powers that they have come into whether that is actual power as the firebird or political power as the ascending queen and yes just absolutely incredible political intrigue it's so twisty and windy and intricate and so clever i i would love to be able to write like that but 
you yourself as the author needs to be so clever to be like a step ahead and to write it so well so like props to Alexandra Overy I could never <laughs> and oh just Asya and this like examination of being a monster like does this power make her a monster and all of this it's all done so well and what really plays into this is what I've not spoken too much about yet is that there's a sapphic relationship it's enemies to lovers a guard is assigned to Asya in the kind of name of her own protection but really to protect others from her and from her power but unfortunately this guard detests the firebird and she has good reason and we find out why but it does mean that they have a bit of an uncomfortable relationship but of course you can't resist the sapphic enemies to lovers and it's just oh, so so good okay again the ending some of these reveals as we got towards the end left me reeling did not predict them they're so oh, so clever because they made so much sense yes um as i've said just complicated sister relationships enemies to lovers uh bodyguard princess kind of trope um incredible political intrigue this really really lush russian inspired setting you've got bears you can ride it's a whole time it's so good so fun i definitely definitely recommend it and then next up are two books that i read for my reading twitter's favorite sapphic books video and the first of these is the midnight lie by marie rakowski so this is again the first in a YA fantasy duology i'm loving this shift towards duologies over trilogies it, I'm, we're really seeing that a lot in this video in particular but i'm liking it and so this follows Nerim who lives in the ward which is a section of her kind of island city that is reserved for this lower class where they've really not got a lot of rights or freedoms and it's incredibly strict and harsh they're not allowed things that you can sweet wearing colour walking about with your hands in your pockets and when one day she is arrested for breaking one of these non-rules and ends up in prison she meets Sid and so Sid is a traveller which in itself is just so bizarre because this island does not get travelers and so you know honestly like most of the population don't believe anywhere other than their island exists but Sid is there and sh she's like rakish and untrustworthy and just a lot of fun to read from to be honest and she tells Nerim that she believes that the high kith which is the kind of high class in the society possess magic and Nerim has to choose between trusting her despite how generally untrustworthy she is and going on this adventure together to prove the magic or staying safe in the ward but ultimately living a very hard life and having to keep a secret quite close to her chest and I adored this one if you want an intoxicating like just unbelievable romance in a fantasy setting I cannot recommend this one enough the romance is just it's next level i've not been so completely taken in by a romance in a good while it is just incredible these two just play off of each other so 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 well there's just lovely banter but also just the best yearning <laughs> there's so many lines that had me like oh my god because they're so good and i just really really adored it and how this also played into Nerim's character development as she went from being like taken advantage of her whole life by everyone around her to seeing through Sid how to be assertive and really realizing her own value and her own power and just uh, so good I love them so much <laughs> I cannot wait for the sequel it comes out this year so like it's not too long to wait if you want to pick it up and this is a kind of slow burn in terms of plot and you really don't know where it's going till you get later on in the book but once you do and once it kicks off my good god it's so good so interesting and i really can't wait to see how it develops in the sequel i think it's just such an interesting concept and i really just i have no idea what's going to happen next it another one where the ending kind of left me reeling and i was like what <laughs> that can't end there like that it's just mm, so good 
And it's also got this like gorgeous lyrical writing and it's also just very simple and it works so well for Nerm's narration and I just it's, please read. It's, it is absolutely just unbelievable. It's so so good. One thing I particularly enjoyed was that Sid is very very explicitly a lesbian, although obviously the word is not used because it's fantasy. It's very very clear she is not attracted to men and I believe that Nurem is also dealing with Compet and is also a lesbian herself and even if you know it turns out she is bi there is very much this discussion of Compet and how that can affect you and the situations it can put you in and kind of unlearning it and dealing with it and I just it's done so well and it's so interesting to see in fantasy when we barely even get it like in contemporary and it's just so good so well written right from the beginning and oh love it so 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 much so yes just before we get on to our last book i want to say that there are reviews for the four that i've spoken about on my goodreads and i'll link them down below just because they were all review copies other than the midnight lie but i wanted to review it anyway so i can request a copy of the sequel because i need some answers <laughs> But yes, the final book I want to talk about is This Is How You Lose the Time War by Max Gladstone and Amel and Wattar. So this is a Romeo and Juliet retelling, but it is following two assassins on opposite sides of a centuries long time war. And that's such an interesting concept. This is a standalone, it's a novella actually, it's really short, it's like 200 pages. And it's got the most gorgeous, gorgeous writing and imagery and oh my god, it's is genuinely stunning. So yes, as we, so yes, as I've said, we follow these two agents. There's red and blue, and they fall into correspondence with each other as one thwarts the other's kind of mission and leaves a note to taunt them. And I get mixed up when we started it, but we follow like alternating perspectives, one and the other, and as this correspondence goes from this teasing and taunting to becoming something real and dangerous as they fall in love and even just these taunting letters would be enough to get them killed so this situation is very very precarious and we just follow them in all these different parts of time whether in the past or the future and just constantly constantly in love with each other falling in love through these letters and they're just so gorgeous i really wasn't sure if i would like this one i was very uncertain about picking it up because I'd heard it was quite confusing, sci-fi is not really my thing, but rest assured it is um, incredible and that's as someone who's not a fan of sci-fi, who really struggles with like complicated stories, I like to know what's happening. I adored it, I didn't find it too difficult to understand, I read it in what two days, something like that for the vlog and I just I loved it so 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 much. If you like your sapphic yearning, you will adore this one. It's done so well. It's just so romantic and good and the Romeo and Juliet parallels. It's an absolutely incredible, incredible story and I cannot recommend it enough. I just, I need more. It is so gorgeously written. And yes, that has been the five books I wanted to talk to you about today. I hope that you'll consider picking some of these up. I cannot recommend them enough. I really adored them. They're all four or five star reads and I just love them so much. <laughs> yes, as I've mentioned, you will find links to reviews on Goodreads down below as well as just general Goodreads links. You will find my social media, especially that Instagram if you want to see the cover of the sequel to These Feathered Flames next month. And you will also find my bookshop affiliate link if you fancy doing some book shopping and supporting me, the environment and independent bookstores. And I really do recommend them as a good alternative to Amazon. And yes, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed and I'll see you with another video soon.